this was filmed in God's creation, so the wind is making a bunch of noise and some things happen. I just wanted to be not in a classroom, out in nature, so that you can see some of the God's beauty out there. Welcome to TeacherTrent.com. What we're going to be learning about today is why do atoms bond? Why do they go ahead and combine into these different wonderful things that we have here? Like this beautiful uh, pine wood here, this dry erase board, this wonderful sand that we have here on this wonderful, a wonderful beach. And all the chemical bonds are in the wonderful and beautiful you. The reason atoms bond is because they want a full valence or outer shell. The valence shell is the outermost shell of an atom. Typically, an atom is classified as being full if you have eight electrons on the outer shell. Eight electrons. Comes down to we calling it the octet rule. Oct meaning eight. Eight electrons on the outermost shell. There is an exception though. The exception is this. You can only have two electrons with only one shell. It's full, an atom's full with just two electrons if you only have one shell. That's the exception. If you have two shells, it's full with eight electrons. If you have three shells, it's full with eight electrons. If you have four shells, it's full with eight electrons. If you have five shells, how many electrons does it take to make it full? You're correct. It would take a total of eight. It would take a total of eight. And the same for six shells is full with eight, seven shells is full with eight. So atoms bond because they want a full valence shell. Atoms bond because they want a full valence shell, a full outermost shell. Thank you very much. There are three main types of chemical bonds. They are ionic bonds, covalent bonds, and metallic bonds. Ionic bonds lose or receive their electrons. Covalent bonds share their electrons. And metallic bonds have free moving electrons. Now we'll be learning about how an atom becomes an ion, and an atom becomes an ion because it wants to have a full valence shell. Atoms on the left side of the periodic table lose their electrons to become an ion. Atoms on the right side receive electrons. Please repeat after me. Left loses electrons and an energy shell. Right receives electrons. Left loses electrons and an energy shell, right receives electrons. Left loses electrons and an energy shell. Right receives electrons. Left loses electrons and an energy shell. Right receives electrons. Now, let's, now we're starting the ionic bond section. So, Na is going to be losing its electron and outer shell. Out of the, the electrons on the outer shell. So, atoms on the left hand side of the periodic table lose electrons. The sodium atom loses its one electron and also the outer energy shell. So we are left with eight electrons on what, what used to be the second shell and now has become the outer shell because every atom wants a full outer shell. Left loses electrons and an energy shell. So now we still have 11 protons, but the number of electrons that we have now is a total of 10 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 electrons. So this is going to change our overall charge. Negative 10 electrons. So negative 10 plus positive 11 equals... a positive one 
net charge. I still can't believe that periodic table blew away. All right, so that's our first sodium atom. Change it into an ion so it's no longer an atom. It is now an ion. All right, for the fluorine atom, it's on the right-hand side, so it receives electrons. Fluorine here on the right-hand side of the periodic table. So we're going to change this from the atom into an ion. So in order, and remember, right receives electrons. So we're going to add one more electron on the outer shell. Then it's going to have eight electrons on the outer shell, fulfilling the octet rule. How many arms or tentacles does an octopus have? Eight. Octet rule. Octopus, eight. Octet rule, eight electrons on the outermost shell. So, that's of course except for if you just have one energy shell. Then it's full with two. All the other outer shells are full with eight. So, now we have, our protons have not changed. Our protons are the same. We still have nine protons, we still have nine protons here. So now we have 10 electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 electrons. So now we're gonna change this to negative 10 electrons. So negative 10 plus positive nine, negative 10 plus positive nine equals a negative one net charge. Negative one net charge. Now this is no long this is no longer an atom. You have to change this. To an ion. We're gonna go over. Alright, let's talk about the sulfur atom and make it into an ion. Sulfur is here in, in group 16. That means it's on the right hand side of the periodic table. So Please remember, right receives electrons. And every atom wants a full outer shell, or a full valence shell. Valence shell is called the outer shell. And it wants to have eight electrons. Typically, it wants to have eight electrons on the outer shell. So if you have two energy shells, the outer shell is going to have eight electrons. If you have three energy shells, the outer shell is going to have eight electrons. If you have four energy shells, the outer shell is going to have eight electrons. Five, six, seven, and uh, groups periods five, six, and seven will also have eight electrons on their outer shell. This one has three circles or three shells, so the third shell wants to have eight electrons on its outer shell. Right now we only have six, so we're gonna add two more. That will give us a total of 18 electrons. We just added two more electrons, so we know that's going to be 18. We can double check our, our, our numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Well, negative 18 plus positive 16 equals a negative 2 net charge. So the sulfur ion will typically have a negative 2 net charge right receives electrons. Thank you. We will have more ions after the scriptural reading. All right, let's talk about the lithium atom. Please remember that the lithium uh, is on the left-hand side of the periodic table. Left loses electrons in an energy shell. Left loses electrons in an energy shell. Left loses electrons in an energy shell. So what is the lithium gonna do with its outer shell? It's going to lose its outer shell and any electrons that are on the outer shell. So we're gonna Erase this outer shell with that electron. And we have just one energy shell with two electrons on it. When you just have one energy shell, it's full with just two electrons. All the other outer shells are full with a total of eight electrons on the outer shell. 
So, we have two electrons now. So we have two. electrons. Negative 2 plus positive 3 equals a positive 1 net charge. And it's no longer an atom, it becomes an ion. Alright, the mag magnesium atom, we're going to make it into an ion. So magnesium is here in uh, group 2. So, as we already know, our general rule is left loses electrons in an energy shell. So magnesium is going to lose this outer shell and the electrons that are on it. So now we have a total of 10 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 electrons. So we're going to change that to... 10 electrons, and then negative 10 plus positive 12 equals a positive 2 net charge. So what you can see is if all these in group 2 have 2 electrons on the outer shell, how many are they going to lose each time? So what is going to be the charge? What do you think? It's going to be a positive 2 net charge. All these in group 1, what sort of uh, charge are they going to have? They're going to have a positive 1 net charge. Heavenly Father, thank you that by the grace of Jesus we can have a conversation with you. We praise you, and Lord, we ask that you please help us with understanding how to make iron more models and with all of, every aspect of our lives. 